Welcome to the Garage Back today. We got a quick diagnosis video for you. This will apply to 99 to 07 F250, F350 Super Duties with the 7.3 or the 6.0 Power Stroke in it. Uh, I got a vacuum problem here. Customers complaining of only getting air blown out of the defrost. His four wheel drive hubs aren't working. And uh, we're going to go through diagnosing this and, and showing you how to figure out quickly what the problem is with it, your pump or leak or whatever else it is. So, y'all stick on with us. All right. So, first thing, key on. Truck's sitting here. Motor's not running, obviously. Key is on. Our vacuum pump isn't running. And first off, we notice this is not a Ford factory pump. This is a Dorman made in the land of China pump. So, we don't have anything here. All of our vacuum lines are hooked up. So, let's see if we have power here to the pump. I'm going to unplug this line so I don't pull on it. Unplug your pump right here. It's really supposed to have these rubber. Well, it doesn't even have the rubber plugs on it. It's supposed to be having the rubber plugs down there on that base. We're going to take our voltometer. What we want to do is see if we have voltage first off. Make sure we don't have a wiring problem or a fuse problem. Make sure you got 12 volts here at your battery. You got 12.1. You're going to take your plug, see which one, see if either is hot. We have 12.01 volts here, so we have voltage here to our plug, so we know we don't have a wiring problem. 12.01 volts. All right, so now, here at Automatic Garage, we always have spare parts sitting around. So this is a Ford factory vacuum pump. You can see it says Ford on it here. It's probably made in the land of, no, it actually says made in USA on it. So this is a factory one. This is a quality one. It's way more expensive than getting the cheap Chinese one, but I think it lasts a whole lot longer. And auto, you see that we, we have voltage here. The pump, the regulator in the pump is working, saying that it's reaching 15 pounds of vacuum immediately right there. So now we're gonna hook it up. To our system here we're gonna see if we produce vacuum for it to cut off all right so the pump is trying to achieve vacuum so now we're gonna see if we have a line leaking whether it's something in the dash for the HVAC controls for the heater control here if we have a leak in our canister if it's a leak going to the four-wheel drive uh, solenoid here or not so what we can immediately do first off this is easy to pull off you hear the vacuum take this you can plug it up with just a bolt or something we're gonna let that run for a second we're gonna see if it if it does the same thing but doesn't try to achieve vacuum all right <clears throat> we got the same issue trump pump is trying to cut off because it's achieving vacuum so now we're going to see how much vacuum we're making we're going to take something else out of the loop now too so if we disconnect this here where it goes into the canister which is these two lines that go to your hvac controls and it also runs over here to this uh, your heater hose control over there. This is just a generic vacuum gauge that I use. We're gonna see where our vacuum goes up to. So now at this point, we have eliminated everything out of the vacuum system except for the canister, this hose, and the pump. We know the pump works because we plugged it up. We cover it up with our finger. And as soon as it achieves, it achieves vacuum, as soon as you cover it up with your finger. So it's doing right, producing vacuum, and the regulator in, inside of it is telling it to cut off. So that's working. So now what we're thinking is we either have a crack possibly in our canister or a seam that's busted on it, or we have one of these hoses leaking. So let's see how much vacuum we produce real quick. It should come somewhere close to 15 pounds. It should start chattering here any minutes because it should cut off at 15, yeah. So it's sitting there trying to cut off. So now we either have a leak in our canister or we have a leak in our hose. So, and right now I just noticed we have a little slit in this line right here. So if you look there, now the pump cuts off. 
So it's it's pulling enough vacuum to, to tell it that it really is just about to cut off, but it can't quite hold it. So there you go. Right there at 15 pounds. So now this hose is made into this rubber fitting that goes onto the canister. It has a 90 degree elbow right here that goes into the pump. So instead of getting rid of those two ends, I'm gonna show you how I will fix this a lot of times. So we're just gonna cut a small section out of our hose right here. We're gonna get rid of the slit that's right there in it. We have a piece of this clear hose here. Get my hand out of the way. We're gonna work it over this hose down as far as we can go. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna hook this back up to our canister. We're gonna hook this back up to our pump. We're gonna plug our pump back in now. We're gonna see what the vacuum does now. All right, so we put our new hose on that fixed the problem. We went on and taped our ends real nice and tight so there's no chance it'll slip off. It's sitting there holding vacuum, no problem. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our vacuum gauge back out of the loop. We're gonna hook back everything back up the way it's supposed to be. We're gonna check and make sure that the pump cuts off. Pump cut on there. So we're gonna stick this back on here. We pull that, that pump up. Should achieve vacuum here in just a second, then we can check everything. So make sure that all those HVAC controls work and all that good stuff. And it should cut off pretty quick now because it's not working to make vacuum like it was. All right, it's achieved vacuum. It's not trying to cut back on. It's not sitting there trying to work still. Everything is hooked back up factory. So Lee, why don't you run inside and try all the controls out? Make sure you got defrost, vent, floor, all that good stuff. We got floor. All right, try vent. We got vent. Go to defrost. It defaults to defrost. If you have a problem, that's where it's the only place it's going to blow out. So all that's working. So we got that fixed. So now, say you hooked all this back up and you got the pump kicking on, trying to work still, which that pump just kicked on because we just ran the HVAC controls and dropped the, the vacuum a little bit. So if it was still trying to run continuously, and you had all this hooked back up, or you still had it kicking on rather frequently, we're gonna check for leaks other places. So things you wanna look for is leaking right here at this four-wheel drive control, which we took that out of the loop earlier. But if it was to be stuck open maybe, or if they had their four-wheel drive on, uh, these rubber hoses down here, this rubber hose right here that goes down to your hub down here, uh, check these lines. They get really dry and crusty over time. His are nice and soft still. Nothing wrong with that. So you check those. You check the line that runs down here to each one of them. This one here runs up there. So you would check those. Other things to check. Line going over to this heater control here that flips open and close for your heat on your, uh, your line to your heater core there. Check that. You know, check all these smaller plastic ones. These get dry, get cracked, split easy. Especially if people have moved stuff and they route it real tight around stuff like this or something, it could sit here and vibrate and rub on that. Check all those. Check where they run down here. By the HVAC box. They run on down there and then go into the cab of the truck. 
Another thing to look for is inside the truck here. Underneath the dash here, there's the HVAC lines underneath here. And if this cover isn't here, a lot of times people's feet, if, it, if it's not fastened up like it's supposed to have been from the factory, their feet can knock those heater hoses off. You can have a leak, not heater hoses, sorry, vacuum lines off. And uh, you can have a leak there also. Very seldom do I find a problem with the controls or the pods in the dash. I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's very seldom that's a problem. More than likely, it's nine times out of 10 has something to do with these lines that are under the hood here of the truck. Or this canister that we talked about earlier can get a crack in it. Uh, if you've had a tire blow out here on the front, and I'm talking about really blow out, it can beat on this inner fender well, which is what this is mounted to, and it can crack the canister. If the truck's ever been in a wreck, this is something that could be involved also. Uh, any kind of front end damage could shove the battery into it, split one of the seams in it, crack it, whatever. And you could have a vacuum leak there also. So we have a new pump coming for him in the morning. Uh, I believe my price on it's like 80 bucks. Um, we're just gonna go back with the doorman. Uh, Ford can't get one of these in right now, along with many other problems of getting parts. So we're gonna go back with the doorman. Um, he said he put three pumps on here and the whole problem was somebody had not found the leak. They were just throwing a pump on it because the pump wasn't working, thinking that was the problem. Not checking it, not following up with it. Pump running all the time. If that pump runs continuously all the time, it's not gonna last. Uh, so that's what we're doing tomorrow. New pump on it and he'll be all fixed. So hopefully this video will help you all out on diagnosing some vacuum problems. If you have your heater controls not working, only defrost blowing out. If your four wheel drive hubs aren't working and if you just hear that pump running continuously all the time. Um, normally on these trucks, after sitting, you should turn the key on in the winter time if you're waiting for your glow plugs to warm up. Uh, by the time your glow plugs light goes off, nine times out of 10, that pump should be stopping running because this, this canister here is what's storing your vacuum. And if, if everything's working right, you should have enough vacuum stored that pump shouldn't have to run but eight or 10 seconds tops. So it's Automated Garage signing out. Y'all like, subscribe, comment, check us out at Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. We got more Power Stroke videos coming all the time. Check out our shop build going. We're going to have a much bigger shop where we can do a lot more efficient work in here soon. So we're signing out. We'll holler at y'all later.